Congratulations. You've been chosen to teach summer school. You'll be teaching remedial English. Remedial English? Look, I ain't no English teacher. Please take your seats. Where should we take them? We're stuck here. We're trapped like rats. Thumbs up from me. Same here. To sum it up, I'm Chainsaw. I'm Dave. We'll see you at the movies. Interesting phenomenon. What do you want from me? How do you teach? <sighs> so if you grew up in the 1980s, your mother was probably obsessed with an actor named Mark Harmon. Still going strong many, many years later on NCIS, Mark Harmon in the 1980s was one of those 80s leading men that, of course, everybody went crazy for. There were maybe four or five real heartthrobs. There was Tom Selleck, Harrison Ford, Don Johnson, Bruce Willis, and probably Denzel Washington, although he was maybe late 80s, early 90s at this point. But then right behind them was Mark Harmon, and his most successful moment as a movie star was in 1987's Summer School, directed by Carl Reiner, which is this week's best movie you never saw. Yes, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> so in this movie, a goofball gym teacher is forced to teach a remedial English class over the summer. And in addition to Harmon, the movie also stars Kirstie Alley, who is just about to break out on Cheers. I've seen some of your students. Very scary. Dean Cameron. Oh, don't ever call me that. The name is Chainsaw. I was in Black and Decker. As in Texas Massacre. Courtney Thorne Smith. It's a female thing. And Shawnee Smith. The music was by none other than Danny Elfman. And of course, it was directed by the late, great Carl Reiner. So this is one of those kind of likable movies that, you know, everybody remembers fondly from the 80s. It's never going to show up on the best movies of 1987 list, but, you know, it's a film that's kind of sweet and holds up pretty well years later. I recommend this time, I pass. You're going to do well, Jerome. I can feel it. So, a little bit of background. Hollywood spent a couple of years trying to make Mark Harmon happen as a movie star. He was fresh off of an arc on St. Elsewhere, which infamously had his character contract aids from a one night stand, and this left his career red hot. For a while, he was seriously considered to replace Don Johnson on Miami Vice after contract negotiations fell through, and in 1987 and 88, we got a whole bunch of starring vehicles that would try him out in a variety of genres to see if one would stick. He did action in the Presidio, even doing his own stunts, even though the film was stolen by co-star Sean Connery when he beats up a guy with his thumb. I always thought that part was amazing. Now, are you sure you want to have a fight? Because I'm only going to use my thumb. Thumb? And then he did drama in Stealing Home and even zany comedy, which is, of course, this week's film, Summer School. Hey, Mr. Shoup, wow. Uh, you in this class too? Mm -mm. I'm teaching it. No. no way! Now, Mark Harmon himself loved this character, telling AV Club, Ooh, Freddy Shoop. People wanted a teacher like Freddy Shoop. Heck, I wanted a teacher like Freddy Shoop. What's interesting is that Harmon told him what won him the part in the movie was an interview he did on the Today Show with Brian Gumbel while he was promoting a movie called The Deliberate Stranger, where he infamously played Ted Bundy. So, in a way, Ted Bundy led to this beloved family comedy? Hmm, stranger things have happened. Directed by, of course, Carl Reiner, this was another youth-oriented comedy featuring a wild cast of characters, not unlike the then very popular Police Academy series, albeit done with a lot more style by guys like Reiner and his writer Jeff Franklin, who would become famous for creating Full House. Harmon was cast against type in a role that seems like it was tailor-made for a guy like Steve Gutenberg, but he gives it a little bit of class. And while it was not a smash hit, the PG-13 flick grossed a solid $35 million in the US, which is not bad at all. And in fact, it came in ahead of classics like The Lost Boys, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and The Princess Bride. Inconceivable! So while Summer School did pretty well at the box office and was also a hit on video, it's not a movie that's often talked about when we discuss classic 80s comedies. Fair enough, as it's no Ferris Bueller's Day Off, although the dog in Summer School is a better actor than in most 80s teen movies. I mean, that dog is friggin' funny. You know what we need? I mean, besides bread, a woman who appreciate what we have to offer. The movie itself is nice. 
I wouldn't say it's a side-splitting hilarious movie, but it's definitely a pleasant programmer that made me pretty happy as a kid. Reiner's got a big heart, and he made Summer School into a movie that's aged well and stands as a prototypical 80s comedy. But here's the difference. When you look back at a lot of 80s movies, the leading man is always a bit of a jerk who's uh, always a, kind of above everybody else and making fun of people. See, Mark Harmon's Freddy Shoop doesn't do that in the movie. He's distinctly not a jerk. All you had to do was babysit some social deviants. Some of those deviants are great kids. I'm sure they'll grow up to be wonderful criminals. Of course, when you re-examine 80s movies through a modern lens, people kind of roll their eyes. And I think the thing is, Bill Murray, when he did that kind of role, really made it palatable because he was so cool and iconoclastic. You know, he's perfect. If you watch Bill Murray in Ghostbusters, What's this one? Just a couple of wavy lines. Sorry, this isn't your lucky day. You don't think that Peter Venkman's an asshole, even though if another actor was playing the part, he might come off that way. But alas, there was only one Bill Murray, and so many actors tried to copy him, and it just doesn't come off. The results were not pretty at all. And I feel like if anyone had tried to make summer school besides Carl Reiner, they probably would have had the guy playing Mr. Shoop do a Bill Murray impression. But they didn't go that way. They decided to make him a sweet character, really sweet, as in kind, and Harmon makes the part his own. You need an intelligent, sensitive man who can skate. Do you know such a guy? Oh, they're hard to find. He opts to show off a goofy sweetness that makes him very appealing and kind of runs contrary to his looks because, hey, Frank Shoup looks like a confident guy, like he could have any woman he wants. But in this movie, he's made accessible. Sure, he doesn't want to be teaching summer school and wants to be seen as the cool guy by all the students, but he does it without a shred of meanness. Of course, he's got a you know antagonist in the film who is his rival for the affections of Kirstie Alley. Be darned, you're a heterosexual and a damn good one. And I mean, look at Mark Harmon. There's no way that Kirstie Alley would ever kick him out of bed. If you know what I mean. She's the teacher next door, and he wins her over pretty effortlessly just by being chill and, of course, looking like Mark Harmon. What kind of guy are you dating now? Oh, the kind who wears socks. I got a pair somewhere. White ones. It's funny, Mark Harmon, looking back at the film at AV Club, says that probably the best thing to come out of the movie was that 20 years later, they put the movie out on DVD and they actually recorded a commentary track with him and Carl Reiner. So he got to sit down in a room with Carl Reiner and just hang out and also tell him personally what he meant to him. So Harmon seems like a pretty nice guy, so I could see why Shoop was such an accessible character. And it's kind of weird that he never made it as a leading man after this. But the issue was probably that his follow-up movies were just never quite as good as Summer School. He never again worked with the caliber of talent he did in his two most successful films, this and The Presidio. No matter, he's done extremely well for himself on TV, being the star of NCIS for god decades at this point. But again, with consistently good material, I truly think he could have been a movie star. Otherwise, Summer School sports a strong teen cast of likeable kids, with the standouts of course being Dean Cameron as Chainsaw and Gary Riley as his buddy Dave. Maybe the first modern movie geeks to ever show up in movies. Oh, I gotta tell you, I love this film. It had passion and a plucky spirit, and the, and the characters had integrity. The two are horror-obsessed, Fangoria-reading guys that should bring back a lot of nostalgia for anyone that loved gore in the era. And here's something interesting. The guy who edits this show, his name is Edward Clark, and when I told him that I was doing an episode on summer school, he wrote me back and said that he saw the movie in theater five times when he was a kid, and then he wore out the VHS, and that it was a major influence in his life, prompting him to go to college for special effects makeup and animatronics before transitioning to film production and editing. Both Rick Baker and Norman Cabrera worked uncredited on summer school, helping to pull off some of the effects. And the two guys, Chainsaw and Dave, are his heroes. So they inspired him to go in the direction that has led to him editing the best movie you never saw. And for that, hey, I thank you, Summer School, because Edward's a great editor. And hey, it's always funny where you can find inspiration, isn't it? Plus, there's also Courtney Thorne Smith in this movie, who's hot as always as a surfer, Shawnee Smith as a pregnant teen before she became a horror icon, and more. And yeah, Danny Elfman does the soundtrack, which is perfectly 80s, and arguably has a stronger cult following than the film it comes from. Now, one thing that's really cool about Summer School 
is that the film was actually my first exposure to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I think that was probably the case for a lot of people because in the movie, Shoop allows Chainsaw and Dave to show the films to class. And I dig the way that Reiner always seemed to understand the cult around Hooper's film, not dismissing it as trash as many other directors of the era might have. You see, these kids, hey, it inspired them, and Reiner celebrates that, again, showing you what it's like when a truly nice guy directs a movie like this. Sure, Leatherface, he wore a mask made out of human skin and he hung people on meat hooks, but hey, we've all got quirks, I've got them, you've got them. So again, Summer School isn't a classic, but hey, it's a pretty pleasant piece of 80s nostalgia with a cool leading man that has a great, great, great dog sidekick, plus a very nice soundtrack and a real sense of fun. It's a nice little gem. And if you like this kind of program, make sure to click on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.